Welcome in, my name is Ryan, I'll be your pilot. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. If you've been here before, welcome back. I love having you here. Boys and girls, before we hop into the video, I wanna thank the awesome sponsor of today's video, and that is SKG Tax. The holiday season is here, and Santa will see who's been naughty or nice. He slays to every roof and goes down every chimney. In tax season, the IRS looks at their naughty and nice list. They go to every mailbox on every street. Don't let the IRS leave you a lump of coal in your mailbox. Call JR the tax czar and talk to a CPA. Make sure you and your business stay on the nice list. JR is an awesome supporter of the channel and a great Jets fan, so if you wanna help a brother out, Make sure you support the uh, great sponsors of our channel. Thank you, JR. Let's move on to our next topic of the day. That is moving on, potentially, probably, from Makai Becton. Big ticket was a big problem yesterday. He gave up a bunch of sacks. Not a good showing from Makai Becton. The whole offensive line was really bad. I'm not going to, this is not pinning it all on Makai Becton, but there's a lot of focus on him because of a video that kind of came out of him walking off the field smiling, and I'll show you guys that in just a second, but lots of, you know, turmoil going on with Makai Becton because he was our number, like the first draft pick by Joe Douglas. He was supposed to protect the blind side of our quarterback. We got to see him with Sam Darnold. We got to see him with Zach Wilson, and we got to see him finally healthy, like through a season. Now he's a little bit, you know, you could say there's a little bit of the high ankle sprain going on or whatever, but by and large, we got to see him through a full healthy season. And I'm happy we got to see Makai Becton through a healthy season because there was always this looming, uh, hope that he was going to get healthy and just be this um, like enormous left tackle that we got to see out of our out of his rookie season. And now that he's been healthy, at least I can kind of say like, oh, it's not his injury concern. It's just that he's not playing well. It's it's just a bad pick. <laughs> it did not work out. This it really sucks. And you know, Makai Becton, I do not think the Jets are going to wind up re-upping him. I think he's probably going to go to another team on a prove it deal because if you look at what he has been worth or what he's done over the course of his uh, jet season this year, in terms of sack, he, sacks, he is a league high. It's at least 11 sacks. He might be at 12 sacks. That number may not be updated <laughs> from, from yesterday. I think he was at he was at 10 tied for the league lead and then wound up getting like 11 and 12 at some point. And then number two, Andre Dillard, <laughs> the number two person on the list for sacks in a season is Andre Dillard. Like, literally the two players that Joe Douglas drafted. I just talked about this. Joe Douglas selected Andre Dillard in Philadelphia as his first Philadelphia draft pick, and Makai Becton, his first draft pick here. Literally the two tackles that are leading the league in sacks. Like, that to me, all the confidence and blind faith that I had in Joe Douglas, fixing this offensive line, and then seeing this <laughs> with Becton and Andre Dillard. Oh, like, how do you have any sort of confidence <laughs> And this guy putting together an offensive line at this point. I'm like super frustrated. From a penalty perspective, the Jets, uh, Makai Becton is the third most penalized tackle. He has 13 penalties against him this year, 10 that were accepted. There's like two other people, like I think ahead of him at this point. There's someone that has like 17. Um, and like Andre Dillard's like pretty high on that list as well. So we're just batting a thousand here. It's really frustrating. And like I said, yesterday coming off the field, there was this video that was playing of Makai Becton and he's smiling and everyone's just kind of like making a big deal about like, is this a thing? Is this not a thing? Should we be upset with it? This guy should be pissed off that he just lost and got abused the way he got abused on the offensive line. And I kind of fall somewhere in the middle because you don't know what's going on through Makai Becton's head. Like I, it pisses me off to see him smiling because I'm burnt up about all the time and energy that I put into this damn fan base. And I just want to feel like the players are feeling as pissed off as I am. But then at the same time, like, it's like the dude's job. Like, if you got to think of it that way and, like, you know, maybe he's just coming off the field. The guy next to him could have said a funny joke or he could have remembered something funny and he just had a moment of smiles. And that's all it was. It could be a very human moment. But Jet fans seem kind of torn on this one. And I I get it. I definitely get it. And I want Makai Becton to be, like, the aggressive, dominant, just massive human, <laughs> like, anger... Oh, I just want him to like maul people. And it just, he seems so soft at such a big size. And like the injuries have been such a big concern. And there's two ways to think of this, right? Like it's, oh, I feel bad for Makai because he has been injured or like, you know, is he bad? And if he's bad because he's injured, then the injury bug still kind of hangs around. So you're kind of in this weird feedback loop of what is Makai Becton. And I think at this point, the Jets just kind of have to move on from him from a, a skill perspective and, 
the thing that sucks is like there's not really a lot on the offensive line right now. You're talking like Titman and AVT might be the only two that are coming back from a starter perspective. Like you have Carter Warren and Max Mitchell under contract. You have Tomlinson, but I don't know if they're going to necessarily hold on to him. They might hold on to him just because they may not be able to get other offensive linemen. That's what you might be looking at. Now, as far as Mekhi Becton's contract goes coming up for this upcoming offseason, he's going to be a free agent. So you got to look at one of the two franchise tags or the transition tags, which are crazy numbers. You're not even going to be touching these things. Franchise tag, 21.7 million, not worth it. 19.7 million for the transition tag, which is, allows you to like match a contract. Not going to happen either. This is really, really bad. And what kills me about this whole thing, and I don't know if you could see it. I'll try to zoom in on the post-production stuff, but Mekhi Becton's thigh pad has a money bag on his thigh, like imprinted <laughs> on the thigh pad come on dude like you gotta earn the money you gotta earn the money i know you talked a big game but i feel like he's been all about like uh, i don't know it's just makai beck has been a very disappointing pick for me and i really wanted the best out of him but i think it's probably best that the jets move on at this particular point in time so guys let me know what you think of the makai beckton stuff should the jets resign him what are the jets going to do with him moving forward J -E -T -S, jets!